The Things They Carried, Chapter 5, Part 1. Enemies. One morning in late July, while we were out on patrol near LZ Gator, Lee Strunk and Dave Jensen got into a fist fight. It was about something stupid, a missing jackknife. But even so, the fight was vicious. For a while, it went back and forth. But Dave Jensen was much bigger and much stronger, and eventually he wrapped an arm around Strunk's neck and pinned him down and kept hitting him on the nose. He hit him hard, and it didn't stop. Strunk's nose made a sharp snapping sound, like a firecracker. But even then, Jensen kept hitting him over and over, quick, stiff punches that did not miss. It took three of us to pull him off. When it was over, Strunk had to be choppered back to the rear, where he had his nose looked after. And two days later, he rejoined us wearing a metal splint and lots of gauze. In any other circumstance, it might have ended there. But this was Vietnam, where guys carried guns, and Dave Jensen started to worry. It was mostly in his head. There were no threats, no vows of revenge, just a silent tension between them that made Jensen take special precautions. On patrol, he was careful to keep track of Strunk's whereabouts. He dug his foxholes on the far side of the perimeter. He kept his back covered. He avoided situations that might put the two of them alone together. Eventually, after a week of this, the strain began to create problems. Jensen couldn't relax. Like fighting two wars, he said, no safe ground enemies everywhere, no front or rear. At night, he had trouble sleeping, a skittish feeling, always on guard, hearing strange noises in the dark, imagining a grenade rolling into his foxhole or the tickle of a knife against his ear. The distinction between good guys and bad guys disappeared for him, even in times of relative safety. While the rest of us took it too easy, Jensen would be sitting with his back against a stone wall, weapon between his knees, watching Lee Strunk with quick, nervous eyes. It got to the point finally where he lost control. Something must have snapped. One afternoon, he began firing his weapon into the air, yelling Strunk's name, just firing and yelling, and didn't stop until he'd rattled off an entire magazine of ammunition. We were all flat on the ground. Nobody had the nerve to go near him. Jensen started to reload, but suddenly he sat down and held his hand in his arms and wouldn't move. For two or three hours, he simply sat there. But that wasn't the bizarre part. Because late that night, he borrowed a pistol, gripped it by the barrel, and used it like a hammer to break his own nose. Afterwards, he crossed the perimeter to Lee Strunk's foxhole. He showed him what he'd done and asked if everything was square between them. Strunk nodded and said, sure, things are square. But in the morning, Lee Strunk couldn't stop laughing. The man's crazy, he said. I stole his fucking jackknife. 